Good morning. Welcome to a morning reflection for Monday the 22nd of November. I hope you're well. This is the week leading up to Advent weekend, Advent Sunday, next Sunday. We're in the final week looking at 40 days of purpose, part of these last three months, September, October, November, looking at who we are to be. And uh, today we're up to day 35 and we are thinking like a servant. We've thought of being created for worship, for fellowship or community, for discipleship. And this is the last day or two on service. We're created to serve God and serve others. And then the last few days will be around mission and evangelism, sharing our faith, communicating the gospel of God's love. So final couple of days thinking about servanthood, thinking like a servant, day 35, a list of scripture verses for today. I wonder which of these might really speak to you today about servanthood. Philippians 2 and verse 5 from the message reads, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. Or Numbers 14 and verse 24 my servant Caleb thinks differently and follows me completely. Servants think more about others than about themselves. It's only when we forget ourselves that we do the things that deserve to be remembered. It's only when we forget ourselves that we do the things that deserve to be remembered. Philippians 2 and verse 4 in the message forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand or a few verses later philippians 2 verse 7 jesus emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant matthew 5 and verse 41 from the message jesus said if someone takes unfair advantage of you use the occasion to practice the servant life Servants think like stewards, not owners. Servants remember that God owns it all. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 2. The one thing required of such servants is that they are faithful to their master. And Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Luke 16 and verse 13. And a couple of verses earlier, Luke 16, 11 says, Jesus said, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will you trust? Who will trust you with true riches? King Amaziah lost God's favour because he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not with a true heart. 2 Chronicles 25 and verse 2. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a true heart. Servants think about their work, not what others are doing. They don't compare, criticise or compete with other servants or ministries. They're too busy doing the work God has given them. Here's a string of uh, scriptures relating to that notion. Galatians 5 and verse 26 in the message, we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. I like that. Nehemiah 6 verse 3, Nehemiah said to those who were trying to distract him as he worked to rebuild the temple, my work is too important to stop now and visit with you. Romans 14 and verse 4. Who are you to criticise someone else's servant? The Lord will determine whether his servant has been successful. And when Jesus was at Bethany, a guest of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him as he was eating dinner and anointed him with a bottle of very expensive perfume. When the disciples saw what was happening, they were furious. That's criminal. This could have been sold for a lot and the money handed out to the poor. When Jesus realised what was going on, he intervened. Why are you giving this woman a hard time? She has just done something wonderfully significant for me. 
You will have the poor with you every day for the rest of your lives, but not me. When she poured this perfume on my body, what she really did was anoint me for burial. You can be sure that wherever in the whole world the message is preached, what she has just done is going to be remembered and admired. Matthew 26 verses 6 to 13. Servants base their identity in Christ because they remember they are loved and accepted by grace. Servants don't have to prove their worth. Washing feet was the equivalent of being a shoeshine boy, a job devoid of status, but Jesus knew who he was, so the task didn't threaten any self-image. John 13 verses 3 to 5. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. John 13, 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians 10.18 says, You may brag about yourself, but the only approval that counts is the Lord's approval. James had the credentials of growing up with Jesus as his brother, yet in introducing his letter, he simply referred to himself as a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James 1 verse 1. Servants think of ministry as an opportunity not an obligation. Psalm 100 and verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Or John 12 and verse 26, Jesus said, the Father will honour and reward anyone who serves me. And Hebrews 6, 10, God will not forget how hard you've worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other Christians. Well, there's our selection of verses today as we consider thinking like a servant, having the mind of Christ in all our servanthood. Forgetting self is the key to doing things that are worth remembering. Servants think like stewards, not owners. They remember that God owns it all. Servants think about their work, not what others are doing. They don't compare, criticise or compete. They're too busy doing what God has given them to do. And servants base their identity in Christ. Because they remember they're loved and accepted by grace, servants don't have to prove their worth. Servants think of ministry as an opportunity, not an obligation. So let's spend a moment in prayer at the start of this new week, at the start of this day, Monday, final week of our 40 days of purpose, thinking like a servant. Lord, help us to picture you aware of who you are, aware of your purpose and kneeling at the feet of your disciples, teaching them a lesson in love and servanthood. You challenge them to wash one another's feet as you have washed theirs. You received the anointing of the woman who poured expensive perfume over you whilst others criticised the cost of such devotion. Lord, help us to think like the servant that you are, coming not to be served, but to serve and to offer up your life for us. We thank you, Lord, for your example. And we pray that we might have servant hearts today not only acting like servants, but thinking like servants with the mind of Christ. Thank you for the opportunities that you will give us today to serve others. And we pray that we may do so as if serving you with gladness and joy in our hearts. We ask this prayer in the precious name of Jesus, our servant, Lord and King. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for this short reflection. We'll be back tomorrow morning for, I think, the final session on servanthood. And then we move to uh, mission and evangelism. We're created to share the gospel good news. Have a great day. God bless you today.